The WTO and Cambridge just launched this book, The History of Law and Lawyers in the GATT WTO, The Development of the Rule of Law in the Multilateral Trading System. The book is about the history of law and lawyers and the evolution of the rule of law. I think this is a remarkable book, really. Um, it tells the story of the rule of law in the multilateral trading system. And it shows how it has developed and how it has evolved uh, through the days of the GATT, uh, all the way through the 20 years of the WTO. And I also think that it shows why we are so proud of the dispute settlement system that we have today, and why it is so important that it be strengthened and that it be preserved. So this book is a collection of testimonies of people who worked in the system from inside, people who work in the GATT WTO Secretariat, and their everyday input into the evolution of the rule of law. The project that we are all here celebrating has been described as painting a portrait of the development of the rule of law in the multilateral trading system. We start this day by constructing a canvas that defines the four corners of the rule of law. One, all including government officials are accountable under the law. Two, that the laws are clear and transparent. Our third corner, that the processes by which laws are enacted and enforced is accessible, fair, and efficient. And our fourth corner, the laws are interpreted by competent, ethical, and independent adjudicators. The GATT did impose some rules, some strict obligations that were respected, or were supposed to be respected, but the enforcement of the rules were not as stringent as with the WTO. And that's certainly one thing that changed with the WTO. Now we have a dispute settlement system whereby governments can complain if another one doesn't respect the rule, and it, the complaint will be automatically and necessarily handled. There were at least two shocks to the GATT system, which served as the catalyst for negotiating firmer rules of procedure and assuring greater professionalism and organizational control. The first was the panel report on Spanish soybean oil in 1981, where the panel aired. This first non-adoption of a panel report had a sobering effect on all of us involved in dispute settlement. A second shock came from the panel case on citrus from the Mediterranean countries, which set the record for worst procedural delays on just about everything. Eventually, governments agreed to build a dispute settlement system that better assured that panels would arrive at the right answer in a fair way. The rule of law was not invented by the, the appellate body. It wasn't something that sprang up in 1994. It was there in the 1980s. It was a rules-based system. Um, and it was a rules-based system because the members wanted it that way. During the Uruguay round, yes, we spent a lot of time on disputes, together with our colleagues from the Rules Division and the other operational divisions. In April 1989, the GATT Council, in this room, adopted a nice early harvest dispute settlement package, plus the TPRM, which we still have. This came about through different tools, but one of important of those tools is the creation of the appellate body, that is a tribunal on law only, and the automaticity of first instance dispute. But also, all the sanctions and all the dispute system of the WTO is under multilateral surveillance. Even the smallest state can ask questions. This is unique. The Uruguay Round negotiators, of whom I was one of the dispute settlement understanding, did not intend to create a court. There was no lengthy negotiation, there's no statute creating the appellate body like there is for the International Court of Justice or the International Criminal Court, other international tribunals. We thought, incorrectly it turned out, that appeals would be rare. Well, much to my surprise as first director of the appellate body secretariat, that turned out not to be the case. How did the appellate body indeed establish the reputation that it enjoys today, not only in the WTO, but in the international law community? I would characterize it in one word, and the word is respect. Respect for the rule of law, 
Respect for each other, and I'm talking about the appellate body members now, respect for the members, timely decisions. Ambassador Lacarte insisted that we had to work within the punishing 90-day timelines. One of the big challenge is that governments trust the WTO dispute system and they trust the WTO rule of law and the small governments in particular. And there's no way they will give it up. So the challenge of the system is to respond to this increasing set of demands. From the point of view of the citizens, I think we still have a big problem in GATT and WTO uh, in explaining to the, in, in explaining and justifying the wonderful GATT and WTO legal system, which is a revolution in international law, but justifying it vis-a-vis -vis citizens in terms of principles of justice or rule of law that remains a very hard task, and I think that remains a challenge for all of us in the future. The system has been very conservative and gradual as it has evolved, almost on the basis of a trial and error, since the beginning of the GATT going into the WTO. But uh, the present the review of the dispute settlement understanding is now about 15 years old, and I think that's a little bit too gradual. We have a tension. One, the side we have, the system works fast compared to other systems. I fully agree with that. But still, the pace of business needs even faster resolutions to their problems today. The dispute settlement system will take the shape that the membership wanted to take. At the end, I, I, I keep hearing that we we or the dispute settlement system has become something, but we are becoming what the membership wants us to become. And it's important to keep this in mind. Of course, the rule of law is more than dispute. Dispute is important because you enforce the rule of law. But accession to the WTO is under the rule of law, work of committees, negotiations. In this institution, we know that if there's a rule, it will be binding and will have to be respected. I was very fortunate because I litigated for Brazil for several years. I also uh, served as a panelist uh, a few times. And that's uh, precisely where this huge respect that I have for the system and for the people that serve it comes from. The rule of law and the dispute settlement uh, system are at the heart of everything we do here in the WTO. I would like to thank the 40 current and former uh, staff members, government officials, and members of the appellate body for their fascinating testimonies on the development of the multilateral trading system.